Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And I wish you all a happy new year. Hope you had a, you know, chill and safe uh, Christmas uh, holiday as well. So going into 2021, um, if last year was a great year, congratulations to you and hope long may it continue into this year. But if it wasn't, as long as you're still in the game and you're managing your, you know, your risk, then make this year a good one. But getting on to the fundamentals and risk sentiment and, um, this is um, a forecast um, analysis from JP Morgan. We were discussing this in the, our private members group um, yesterday. And one of the themes was the US dollar. So will it continue to weaken? And the short answer from JP Morgan is it probably will, but modest, but modestly from current levels, investors are likely to move money from the safe haven of the United States into higher return opportunities elsewhere as the global healing continues investors should be mindful of currency exposure and consider beneficiaries of a weakening dollar such as emerging markets so there are reasons for um, a weakening dollar um, I have really been saying this since uh, September in fact August when the Jackson Hole Symposium you can check out the video on my YouTube channel uh, so Forex fundamental analysis this was it so it's uh, the uh, the one that was about four months ago and uh, we talk about this with the Federal Reserve average inflation target FAIT and why the dollar was going to uh, um, or was likely to basically weaken and uh, a lot of the guys in the group benefited from shorting the uh, the dollar as well as buying the euro again these videos explain the fundamentals and we uh, talk about target, especially on this video here as well, um, which a lot of you have been commenting on um, and sending me messages on. Um, so we were talking about the one, two, five area. But uh, in the short term, you have to also look at the fact that there will probably be pullbacks on the US dollar, right? Because the theme and uh, a lot of financial institutions are quite bearish on the dollar this year, which basically leaves, um, uh, I guess, uh, the market open for pullbacks. Pullbacks are gonna happen anyway due to you know liquidity, et cetera. Everyone can't be bearish or one way without there being pullbacks and because uh, the market needs liquidity, right? So um, Saxo Bank uh, think that bearish bets look a bit overextended. Doesn't mean it can't go down. And I'm not saying that, you know, price is going to reverse, you know, this week, but, um, the, uh, the financial institutions are heavily bearish, which basically opens up for, you know, um, a pullback. And none of us know how big that or large that pullback will be, but just be mindful of um, pullbacks. But overall, uh, pullbacks are good to supply zones where we can get bearish at. So um, looking at the economics behind the dollar, Fed's policy making panel tilts even more dovish in 2021 rotation. So FOMC this week unlikely to even consider um, rate hike amid the pandemic rebound and new FOMC voters could influence debate over asset purchases. So um, if they're unlikely to hike rates um, anytime soon, it means that they're not looking to strengthen their currency which is the US dollar. So changes in the Federal Reserve interest rate setting panel will make US central bank even less likely to tighten monetary policy in the new year, no matter how much of a jolt the economy gets from the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine. So at the moment we are in a currency war. And again, if you wanna know what the currency war is, fundamental analysis four months ago, only 537 views. Let's get this up. This is a very important video. Um, so uh, the currency war, if you don't know what's going on, is that a lot of uh, all central banks are looking to devalue their currency in a recession. So um, that explains why we're in a currency war, but the Federal Reserve are not looking to raise rates anytime soon. They're looking to keep the, um, the, uh, the dollar weak, which is actually advantageous. <laughs> 
And as we alluded to before, the US passes, um, uh, well, say alluded to, but um, we were talking about the uh, the virus um, and uh, there is obviously a rollout. The US passes 20 million cases as new year begins. So um, there is obviously the concerns of uh, the virus still, but the market is actually more forward thinking because of that, because there is a rollout, you know, Oxford Astra will supply 2 million vaccine doses in a week in the UK. So globally, the uh, pharmaceuticals are, um, you know, getting to grips with the vaccine and the rollout, which should be positive going forward. So I think the market has really priced in um, any kind of, um, you know, bad news when it comes to the spread of the virus because there is, you know, um, uh, you know, the vaccines that are coming out which should want to combat the uh, the spread of it or at least um, from an immunisation uh, perspective. And while we're in the UK, Brexit is has been done, right? But Brexit is a new world. Um, it is a new world business is is so Brexit is a new world. Businesses still figure out, uh, still need to figure out. Okay, I thought I read that wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, so Brexit has been done. Um, we've divorced from the uh, the uh, from Europe, but um, the details still need to be ironed out. Yeah. Um, so generally, what does that mean for the for the British pound? It should be quite positive for the pound in general, for positive sentiment for the pound. Um, at least in the in the in the short term, but until obviously details start to um, uh, get uh, uh, exposed, I guess, and the winners and the losers, and see who is the winner, who is the loser of you know the the negotiation and the agreement. So, um, yeah, the 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 um, there are key issues weighing on the city of London after the Brexit deal. So we uh, in the UK. That issue is still not over. It'll probably be rumbling on, um, depending on obviously the uh, what the details come out about the uh, actual deal and who will benefit. So moving into Europe and uh, economics from a from a, the ECB officials closely monitoring strengthening euro. Right, so the strengthening of the euro is a problem. We've been saying this for months. Um, not if you're obviously uh, trading the euro and you understand why the euro would um, appreciate against the dollar or the dollar would depreciate against the euro, for example. But understanding that um, the European Central Bank is closely monitoring the euro's strengthening against the US dollar governing council member Oli Rehn told uh, Germany's uh, Borzen Zeit. No, sorry for butchering that. Uh, while the ECB doesn't target the exchange rate, that does not mean that the appreciation is not important. This is what Forex and currency traders uh, need to understand. If you're just looking at it from a technical perspective, um, you you won't understand these things. And there's an edge beyond just looking at technical analysis uh, that we can uh, take advantage of. Uh, so right, so an ex, uh, the um, an appreciation. Yeah, leads to a loss of competitiveness, meaning um, uh, the uh, GDP, for example, in the business uh, cycle and affects the outlook for growth and inflation, which is what the central bank's mandate is to monitor. Right. So we monitor exchange rate developments very closely and will continue to do so in the future. So the euro has strengthened around 15 percent against the dollar since March since March and is trading at near enough uh, one dollar twenty three cents. Yeah. So it's important because of inflation and also competitiveness and expensive currency is not good for an economy, especially in a recession. But with all of that going on, you know, gold uh, is one of the uh, assets that we should be looking at. And gold caps its best year in the decade with the dollar on the rope. So again, dollar depreciation, yeah, leads uh, to uh, higher gold prices because it takes more of that uh, currency, for example, the dollar to buy gold, right? So gold is a hedge against inflation. And, you know, going obviously looking into the future into 2021, gold miners set for another banner year with focus on discipline. So analysts tout mining stocks 
with strong capital allocation, stimulus, low rates, and weaker dollar to lift gold in 2021. So that again will be positive. A weaker dollar, if that narrative still continues, then it should benefit you know gold prices. Um, now moving on to this week's economic data. This week could probably be all about the um, the FOMC average hourly earnings um, uh, non-farm. Sorry, non, um, uh, yeah. So FOMC meeting and we've got non-farm as well. Employment change. So it's all really focused on the dollar. You also have a Canadian employment change and unemployment rate. So um, the forecast really hasn't come out yet, but uh, I'm sure it'd be probably priced into price this week. Everything else you've got Governor Bailey speaks, um, which is usually important um, for forward guidance. But uh, I think that's pretty much it for this for this week as far as any kind of market moving news. Now let's get on to the technical analysis and starting off as we always do on the US dollar index and the US dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies and it's worth keeping your eye on as um, you can see basically dollar strength or weakness overall and uh, look to uh, take advantage by using this confluence um, on other dollar crosses and dollar pairs like the dollar yen and dollar swiss so um, starting off on a brand new fresh chart for 2021 and we have an area of supply here we also have an area of supply right there where that swing is and i'll just draw maybe about two or three of the relevant ones i don't want to clutter up the chart too much um and uh from a demand zone perspective there is a bit of demand from way back in 2018. i really don't like uh using 2018 demand zones you've got to be aware of them for sure but from a trading perspective um, I'm not necessarily too keen on uh, you know zones that have been that have, that have been there for the past uh, uh, maybe two years because the main reason is whatever drove prices higher here in 2018 is not going to be the same uh, fundamental um, reason that is going to drive prices higher here. Maybe technically yes, but from a fundamental analysis reason, it's not the same. So it's best to wait for what I. You know, consider proof of value. If price does decide to go higher from here, yeah, then it's just a case of a pullback into that demand zone, and then looking for long trades if you want to get long on the US dollar. So um, that's the way that I would approach that. Also, as well, I guess many of you are looking at this whole wide zone here and saying to yourself, well, you've got such a wide zone of 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 supply why would you know where where would, where's price potentially going to turn so that's where you kind of can break down um supply zones using um support and resistance we know that lower highs and lower lows are proven value areas so what you then want to do is within this wider zone of supply is look for prices to come up to here and again looking at the dollar index you're just looking for confluences so if price starts to turn around here on the dollar index and we're in a supply zone let's say on the dollar yen then you're looking for um, then you're looking for short trades on the dollar yen or the dollar swiss for example um, with the confluence of overall dollar weakness at a not only a supply zone but also a technical area of what is known as support and resistance, which support and resistance are supply and demand zones, past supply and demand zones that have been projected into the future. Again, I have videos on that on my YouTube channel. Um, so coming to, you know, I think coming to the end of this uh, analysis on the US dollar currency, I think that's pretty much it. Fundamentally, you understand where you should be, uh, what direction you should be trading, and then look for those um, price to reach those areas look for confluence and then look for trading opportunities on the other dollar crosses moving on to the uh to the dollar yen it's more um some more chart space uh again looking at some uh, some supply zones first we've got uh let's change that to supply Right, we've got a supply zone right there, not necessarily the strongest area of supply at the moment because it hasn't made a new lower low. But we've also got a little bit of supply there, cluster of supply, I would say, around there. And then we've got something up 
here. So those are the areas that you want to look for. Um, and then from a demand zone perspective, we do have some demand right here. So we are actually in a demand zone right there. So again, just looking at certain areas. And again, not necessarily just trading on the, uh, the, the daily time frame. You can zoom down into lower time frames, break down the zone. Where is Where do you want to look for trading, potential trading opportunities? using daily zones and then um, using support and resistance within those zones to understand that you've, you've got the higher time frame confluence. So um, for me, again, it's probably more shorts on the uh, US dollar yen, but I'm not looking to even trade this pair to be fair. Um, it's not necessarily something that's on my radar, but if you are, then you are looking at um, probably a buying opportunity right now or looking at the first area of supply back into this 103 level and then either the 104 or 104, yeah, 104s and then you're looking at an area here and again, if you've got this wide zone of uh, supply, what you're looking for is areas of support and resistance. So that zone there where you can see price bounced off that area, level, 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 and then resistance, resistance, resistance. So it's 104.50, half number, round number. Around there would be where I'd be looking for short trades if I was looking to trade this currency pair. The same can be applied to this area right here. You can see where there is support, support, resistance. And again, just looking at that area confluences of supply and demand moving on to the dollar swiss again dollar swiss let's look at where the supply zones were so we've got supply there uh, we can kind of drag this down to around here you can see where prices did come back and uh, sold off we do have a level of demand i'm wondering if this actually held Mm, no, I'm not going to have that there. Have we got anything further back? No, nothing further back, not for a while. So I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to have any demand until price proves that there is demand within that area. And again, what do I mean by that is you really want to see price, you know, prove that there is demand there. Then that creates a nice demand zone here and then you're looking for prices to pull back into that zone right there so um wait for the market to prove that there is demand in that area and in fact i'm going to draw the supply zone from there so again continued bearish bets prices to probably come up to this area here before looking at any kind of short trades again just a bit of confluence within that area you can see where there has been bit of resistance there looking at the lower time frame for example you can see that there has been resistance 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 so uh, this area here is decent for a uh, for a sell trade and for those of you who um, are in the private members group uh, this zone is also looks like a really nice uh, CPR zone just above that 89.2 level um, to the 89 um, to 0.8946 level as well. So that would be preferable for a nice short trade. I do like that. Um, but let's see what happens going forward. Moving on to the dollar CAD and the uh, dollar CAD. Um, again, dollar being sold off. Am I seeing really supply around here, around here as well? In fact, there's quite a wide zone of supply right there, and then right there. Um, there is an area right here where we've made lower highs and lower lows, and then we do have some demand here. So, in fact, what you want to do now is look for potentially buy trades if you believe that this is a buying opportunity, right? So there's a buying opportunity for the dollar, proof of value, prices pulled back. Is that an area you want to get long on against the Canadian dollar? Or if you want to continue getting short, you have to wait for a pullback into that supply zone. 
and then look for short trades. You do have, again, some confluence of support and resistance at the highs of that zone there where you have some support there, support there, and then resistance. So this is actually quite a nice area to look for short trades. You do have another bit of a micro level within there as well where you've got a bit of resistance and a bit of support within that zone there. So the one to eight level, and then you've got the one to nine area around there, which is decent for a uh, short trade as well. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and this has been on an absolute tear. So again, looking back, I don't really I'm too keen on supply zones that were formed back in 2018 so we're going to focus on the demand zones if you're looking for a pullback and uh, traders who are trend you know had that trend trading uh, philosophy we look for for example value so these are areas where prices are proven value so what you're looking for is pullbacks to areas of demand, yeah, because it made a new high. <clears throat> this is proven demand, so pullbacks into this area, and again, just break that zone down <clears throat> from a daily time frame perspective. You've got some support here, so you've got supports there, support there, so decent for a potential buy if you believe fundamentally that the US uh, dollar is still going to continue to weaken against the New Zealand dollar. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the New Zealand dollar, uh, US dollar, pound dollar, and again, the pound strengthening. We have nice demand. In fact, this whole area right here, very wide area of demand. In fact, we've got some right here, and you've got there and there as well. So quite wide areas of demand. But again, where within this demand zone would you be looking to get involved in? And just break it down so again just put that across that's going to be areas where traders are going to be looking for trades and then you've got another area around here so being patient definitely be patient with regards to this whole area here it's not a pretty chart unfortunately but um you know the rules that we use, which are basically higher highs and higher lows, right? So high, low, and we've made a new high. So this area here becomes demand. Yeah, and I've got a course on this. If you type in again, if you go to uh, my YouTube channel, look in the search and you can uh, uh, look at the uh, how to draw supply and demand zones, the course there, and uh, You'll see exactly why it needs to be this way, but we can also break down this wide demand zone um, using horizontal, diagonal, and dynamic support and resistance. So I think that's pretty much where we are. I think from a supply zone again perspective, nothing until this was back in 2018. So I don't think there's anything I'd really be interested in shorting unless again price proves that there is strong supply here. And then what you want to wait for is price to come back up to zone, which would be somewhere around here, and then look for any kind of short trades. And as prices does, you know, if it does come down, then what you want to do is move your uh, demand zone down with price as it starts to come down, just to clear your chart. Because I know this isn't necessarily the prettiest chart in the world, but it has to be drawn like this because there is demand around this area here. Moving on to the euro dollar and again we were uh, uh, looking at the euro dollar long yeah around here we've been long on the euro dollar since um since august again go back to the jackson hole video i did in uh, in august and september um and you'll see exactly why we were uh, long on the euro in fact the forecast we were forecasting um, or the banks were forecasting one to five a target around here and you can and pretty much we were down at the 116s uh, 117s 118s when we were making when we were looking at these forecasts and you can see what has pretty much happened there 
but anyways looking at what we got now again really no supply zones not really interested in any supply zones from uh, from maybe over two years ago so again if you're looking at the uh, buying the euro against the dollar still then you're looking for pullback into uh, zone and then we have also some confluence of that area there so that's the first area you're probably looking for level of resistance resistance bit of support there so within that demand zone that's where we're looking to get involved and again if you can't see anything on the daily then go down into you know the lower time frames and then get a bit more detail as to where there may be some um, some more detailed areas of support and resistance for you to trade remember it's all about the fundamental analysis though yeah it's all about the fundamental analysis to determine the direction you want to trade in and then we look towards the technicals to look for the entries but really uh, quite a you know a large move from 116s to 123s so i'm expecting probably a deeper pullback hopefully into this one to one area if it comes down into that 119 area that'd be brilliant uh, for a uh, nice uh, swing trade to the upside but again looking for downside trades again you'd have to wait for price to prove that there's supply there before looking at getting uh, short on this currency pair short on the euro long on the dollar uh, euro yen again euro yen we do have I think we had a bit of a spike did a spike above it it may have let's have a look no it actually didn't spike above that supply zone there <clears throat> so what we do have is what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this zone probably around there there is a bit of supply around here not necessarily the strongest but there is supply around here um, I still want to wait for proof of value so I'm not too keen on that zooming out a little bit more again the nearest area is going to be back in 2019 in fact just for the price to see that there is supply in that area I will put it here but I would probably rather wait for price if I'm looking to get short on this to kind of prove that there is some sort of um, uh, supply here we do have a bit of demand prices did make a higher high here so this area here is demand so if you are looking for a trend trade then you're looking at this area here especially like the low of that area I think that's decent around here we've got some confluence of horizontal support around here you are trading at the highs of the range though so not necessarily the greatest deeper pullback would be uh, advantageous but with this currency pair again fundamentally you'd have to understand why you want to be buying the euro and why the euro is a bargain at this price or why the Japanese yen is actually a bargain at this price meaning that prices should want to go a bit lower moving forward and on to the Aussie dollar and again Aussie dollar Australian dollar has been on the absolute tear and this is due to risk on sentiment we've got demand zones really all the way around here I'll draw maybe three zones and again supply zones not interested in anything that is uh, you know too far away waiting for this to prove that there is supply so for prices to actually come all the way down you know prove that there is supply there and then look for any kind of short trades if I'm looking to get short fundamentally so from a long trade perspective um, again on a, on a daily time frame chart don't know if there's any real support and resistance turning points zoom out a little bit possibly around here this is where traders would be looking at anyway but in, the, in this, I think in the short term, I don't think there's really anything worth. There is a bit of confluence there. You can kind of see it around here as well. So that's decent. I think this would also be or constitute as a bit of a CPR on the lower time frame here. So anything below that, so 75 round number to 74.06s would be actually quite a nice uh, buy trade if uh, 
we are looking to buy the Australian dollar, which I am. Personally, again, not financial advice, so pull back into that zone there would be nice. Even lower would be even better for me um, to look for any kind of long trades. Again, short trades, you'd really look for price to prove that there is supply there before getting uh, short. Moving on to the Aussie Yen. Again, the Aussie Yen. Do we have any uh, supply zones from maybe back in May 19? Not necessarily fantastic. I'll leave that for now. But we do have some demand in and around these zones right here. One, two, three. I'll leave it like that. So again, very similar to the um, Aussie dollar pullbacks into these zones here. If you think that the Australian dollar will continue to go higher, which I actually do, and this is due to uh, risk on um, sentiment, obviously the vaccine, the, the, the market is looking past um, uh, any kind of uh, major outbreaks of COVID. So these are really the areas for me. I think the uh, this 78, 80 level is a bit too high for me. It's quite expensive, right? I'd rather wait for a deeper pullback into maybe this area here, the lows, the 7760s, if I was looking at getting long on this area here. And again, we've got a bit of uh, some confluences around here within this zone, and that's quite nice. That 77, close to that 77 round number, right, is quite nice as well for a potential buy. And moving on to gold. So gold, uh, speaking to traders in the room and uh, some uh, that are in, I mean, on, I'm still in on silver and uh, a lot of traders are in on silver as well. Um, but we've got some demand zones around here. This area here between the 1879 um, and 1855, um, isn't necessarily the best area until we make real kind of higher highs to admit this, until this proves that that is definitely a strong area of demand. I'd pref probably prefer prices to really kind of come back to this 1830. So I'll pull back into this area to look for any kind of long trades unless prices do make higher highs. And then I'm looking for, you know, anywhere around these uh, these demand zones uh, around this 1880 um, uh, this first demand zone. If you are looking at getting short, there is, we are currently in a supply zone. But again, the question you have to ask yourself is why fundamentally you're looking to short in that area, the next area of supply here is gonna be at the uh, highs. I do like this technically. I do like that, that massive drop that was definitely um, uh, the uh, gold was considered expensive at this area so if you are looking to get short that area is actually quite nice but my long-term bias is for long gold so that's where those are the areas I'd be looking at getting long at and again I think this area is actually is quite nice because we do have some confluence of support and resistance within that area so that 18 uh, 1859 1860 level may be decent going down to a lower time frame for entry yeah so that might be nice and as long as we've got some good risk reward upside yeah I think actually this area here 1860 is decent for a potential buy and then you've got a nice little intraday support and resistance zone around here as well within that zone there so those are the areas I look for buy trades but again this is not financial advice, nothing of the sort. So, um, so yeah, that's a, that's a quite a nice, uh, those areas to look for potential buy trades intraday. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the analysis. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find the analysis useful. Um, and until the next video, please check out the content that I do have on trading180.com as well as the YouTube website. And again, until the next video, take care, and I wish you all the best.